Today on Schmindian, we're making the delicious chicken and rice dish, Palau. This dish is easy to make, it's packed with flavor, and you only need one dish to cook it in. Let's make it. Welcome to Schmindian, my name is Paul Singh and this is Indian Food Demystified, aka Indian Food for Schmucks. Today we are making a dish that has its origins in ancient Persia but has traveled all over the world based on how delicious it is. This is Palau. So I'm going to give you a little background about the dish and then we're going to make it and then my dad is going to try it and tell me what he thinks about it. First thing that's great about Palau is that it's called Palau. It sounds like something exploding, like Kapow, except it's called Palau. So when I say Palau, I like to say Palau, but as I mentioned, Palau has its origins in ancient Persia, where it was called Pilaf. But it came to India via the Mughals who conquered India and brought this with them during the Age of Exploration. Now, I don't condone violently overthrowing a native people, but if you're bringing Palau with you, I might forgive you a little bit for that. But this dish was actually served in the royal courts of the Mughal rulers of India. And like everything else in India, it's spelled differently in different places, it's pronounced differently in different places, and different places have their own version of it. There's Kashmiri Palau, Bengali Palau, and the fantastically named Lucknow Palau which I love saying. But this dish, this collection of ingredients, has traveled all through the world through trade routes. They have it in the Soviet Union, the Caribbean, Greece, and even as far as Brazil has a version of this. That's how good this dish is. When things taste good, people bring it with them when they go places. And this thing has traveled, which means it's good. So today I'm going to make my family's authentic North Indian Palau with a Canadian twist. So I'm either going to call it Nova Scotia Palau or just Palau. You decide in the comments which one you think is better. But without further ado, let's make it. And here's our ingredients. One tomato, six cloves of garlic, some ginger, 33 almonds, one onion, 43 cranberries, half a lime, one and a half cups of yogurt, about six chicken appendages, and 7,854 grains of rice, and a plethora of Indian spices. So first things first, we're going to marinate our chicken in the yogurt. You should let it marinate for at least a couple hours, if not overnight. I'm using a piece of Tupperware, but just any container with a lid on it will work for this. First we dump in the chicken. Next goes the yogurt. Squeeze the lime. Now we hit it with the spices. One teaspoon of salt. One teaspoon of turmeric. Two teaspoons of paprika. Teaspoon of crushed chilies. You can leave that out if you don't like heat. It's kind of cooler if you put it in though. Teaspoon black pepper and two big old teaspoons of garam masala. Put a lid on that and shake the crap out of it. Okay, we're gonna put this in the fridge one to two hours, at least overnight, preferably. Next, we gotta wash and soak the rice. So, so I'm gonna wash the rice three times and then I'm gonna let it soak for 20 minutes. While the rice is soaking, we're gonna use that time to make our masala. We're gonna start with the onion. We're gonna free the onion from the paper and we're gonna cut these with the grain lengthwise uh, into strips. And just put these into a plate for now. Now for the ginger, I'm going to scrape off the skin with this spoon. We're going to put the ginger aside for now and we're going to ruthlessly attack the garlic with this Canadian mousse cup. Mash it with the bottom of the cup and take all the paper off the garlic and chop up the ginger a little bit. In you go. Garlic. In you go. And back in line. Get a big old wok, a couple tablespoons of oil, about medium heat. Now we put in our seasoning. Two teaspoons of cumin seeds, four whole cloves, one dry chili, you have to put this one in, about a quarter of a stick of cinnamon, two-ish bay leaves, and two green cardamom pots. Now there's a reason I didn't grind these up or put them in uh, muslin so you can pull them out later. I want these in the rice, hanging around. Because if they're in the rice, you have to pay attention to what you're eating so that you don't chomp down on a cinnamon stick. So I feel that Putting them in whole like this makes you pay attention to what you're eating, and the food tastes better that way. Everyone into the pool. In go the onions. We're going to cook this down for about two minutes until the onions are a little bit glassy. In goes the ginger garlic. While these guys are getting to know each other, we're going to chop up our tomato. Just going to make chunks. And in goes the tomato. And two teaspoons of salt. Cook away, my little beauties. Lose your moisture and bring me your flavor. You don't have to talk to your food while you're cooking it, but uh, it's funner for me. I'm gonna crush our tomatoes. 
with our spoon. Crush you, crush you, crush you. I love you, but I have to crush you. Remember that chicken you marinated a couple hours ago or last night? Now we got to get it. All right, in you go. Get all of the marinade in there as well. That is packed full of flavor and spices. I'm just going to add another quarter cup of water. I'm going to cover this and let it cook for about 10 minutes or until the chicken is almost cooked. The steam is going to make this really tender. Just stir occasionally and then cover it back up. This is like a spicy, delicious sauna. It's been about 10 minutes. I'm just going to quickly see how done the chicken is. Oh yeah, it's almost done. So it's a good time now to put in the rice. First, two and a half cups of hot water. And then our soaked rice goes in. Now we're going to add a Canadian twist to this. A lot of times people use raisins to add a little sweetness with all this spiciness. But being in Canada, my mom actually started using cranberries, which I thought tastes better than raisins. And also it makes it a little bit more regional. So this is a Canadian chicken palau. Anyway, cranberries. Try them out. In go the 33 almonds. Shout out to Larry Bird. And I'm going to add one cashew nut just for good luck. Stir it together. So we're going to put this on medium and let it boil for 10 minutes. All of those spices are going to get infused in the rice and it's going to be so good. Cut the heat and we're going to cover this and just let it steam for about 10 minutes. While that's steaming, I'm going to make a sauce to finish this off. All right, these are our ingredients for our raita. Yeah, yogurt, a stump of cucumber, a couple of cherry tomatoes, some toasted cumin, and some raw honey. We're just going to grate this cucumber. In you go. The cucumber keeps the yogurt cold and it adds a great texture too, a little bit of crunch. It's really nice. We're going to slice the cherry tomatoes into strips. So basically quarters, but lengthwise. In you go, my adorable little tomatoes. In goes the toasted cumin and the honey. And we're going to add half a teaspoon of salt, quarter teaspoon of pepper. Now we've got our sauce. We've got our raita. I'm going to bring back our palau. Oh, it looks good. It smells good. It tastes good. Sometimes I just got to take a second to admire, you know, something when it's good. Ah. Okay, now we are going to slowly and gently fluff this rice. Slowly, gently. It smells so good. And we're going to make our plate. I want to get at least one leg in there. I'm more of a thigh guy myself, but it's good to have one leg. And we're going to put the raita on the side. So you've got the palau over here, spicy, warm, robust. And you've got the raita over here, cold, crisp, a little bit crunchy. And you put these two things together and they are so good. Especially the temperature change, the coldness here and the warmth here. That really plays a big part. All right, uh, I'm going to go for a thigh. Oh yeah, it's falling apart. It's falling apart. Thighs are falling apart. Right thigh in there. Oh, it's unbelievable. God damn, it's good. Really, really nice. I got an almond that time. But don't just take my word for it. Let's see what my dad thinks. Dad. Yeah. What are we uh, eating today? It looks like chicken palau. It is chicken palau. It is chicken palau. I was thinking about changing the name to palau. No, they call it palau. I know. All right. But everyone could pronounce it different. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Would you like to try it? Uh, yeah. Okay. Did you marinate the chicken though? I did for, for a long time. Oh, good, good, good. With yogurt and everything? Yes, with yogurt and everything. And you have raita too? Yes, I made the raita as well. Some people use plain yogurt. Oh, what do you prefer? Uh, plain or? I prefer raita though. You do? Yeah. Okay, well, that's good that I made some. Okay. Looks good. Very thin. Good, good mix of spices. Okay. Good. Chicken is pretty tender. Okay. Rice are pretty kind of open and not uh, mushy or mushy. Mm-hmm. 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 Spice is a good proportion. Okay. Everything looks good. Okay. Uh, uh, would you make any changes? Would you add anything? Mm, no. 
No? Not today. Okay, so you would recommend this Palau to people to make, for people to make? Yeah, I do, because you... this is a dish you can serve to four or five people, you make once. Mm -hmm. You don't need anything else, this is a complete dish in itself. I can finish some of it. That's okay, you don't have to. <laughs> That's okay. You don't have to finish it. That's okay there. Okay. Thank Good. you. Thank you very much. Okay. Mm. This has been Schmindian and we just demystified Palau or Palau. So if you'd like to see more of these videos, then click over there or over there. Have a good day.